Hey everyone, hope you're all going well and I hope you all had a wonderful holiday and New Year's. Today, I want to talk about a new comic series Life is Strange has called Life is Strange Dust. Issues 1 and 2 are out now, I've read them, and I have a few thoughts on them. Both comics are pretty short so I don't really have too much to say. I'm also not a huge comic reader and I don't really know what makes a comic good or bad. So this is basically just going to be me talking about my reading experience without any real thorough analysis or criticism. But anyway, my feelings on the comic are genuinely positive. It's got Max and Chloe, that's a big plus. It's got some incredible art and detail throughout every panel that brings everything to life, that's pretty awesome. And I think the story is going in a pretty interesting direction despite some of my previous concerns, which I'll talk about later. The comic follows Max and Chloe almost one year after the sacrifice Arcadia Bay ending in season one. They both live with Max's parents in Seattle and they've both been invited to a memorial service taking place in the town to honor those who lost their life in the storm and say their final goodbyes. Max and Chloe aren't quite ready for this yet, but due to some really weird time stuff happening, Chloe decides they need to go back and face Arcadia Bay. The first issue spends a lot of its time establishing all of this, as well as introducing us to some new characters, and it's for these reasons that I personally think the second issue was way better. I didn't really care about any of these characters or their band thing they have going on, so I thought this part of the comic wasn't really that great. But then, once we focused on Max and Chloe and the stuff that was going on between them, I became way more interested and the story really picked up. Issue 2 had my attention right at the beginning and was infinitely more enjoyable to read as we returned to Arcadia Bay and gained a bit more insight into the personal lives of Max and Chloe. This trip back to Arcadia Bay isn't easy for them. Chloe hasn't totally come to terms with the death of her mother Joyce. The whole ceremony appears to be an attempt by the Prescotts to disregard what really happened with Nathan, Rachel, and the Darkroom. And Max is dealing with all kinds of problems regarding her feelings of going back, of letting go, and reigniting some questions season 1 brought up about chaos theory and the butterfly effect. Then there's Max and Chloe's relationship, which is being portrayed as pretty ambiguous so far. Personally, I don't really take issue with this. I'm enjoying the comics and their interactions together so far as they are, but I can understand why some people might be annoyed by that ambiguity. It's a comic about Max and Chloe, one of the biggest ships in this entire franchise. Expectations are high for some Kino price field. Looking towards the future, while I don't mind a bit of restraint on their relationship considering the circumstances, I do hope this is really just building towards something more meaningful meaningful and heartfelt between them. Something that couldn't be achieved if the rest of the comic was already full of these really cute, heartfelt moments. Something like that might be really interesting and touching if done right. Putting aside Max and Chloe for a moment, another large aspect to the story in the comic is the strange, time-twisting, reality-bending stuff that's happening. I'll be honest, I wasn't too hyped for the time stuff initially. I really wanted this to be more driven by the characters rather than the supernatural. But I actually like what's being done here. Reality itself is changing and warping before Max's eyes. You can notice small details about Chloe or the environment change throughout each panel panel in both issues, which advances to Max briefly finding herself in different realities, which eventually leads to Max and Chloe as well being able to step into alternate timelines. So far, I'm pretty sure we've seen about six different realities. The main one that the comic takes place in, a reality where Max and Chloe are in Seattle but Joyce is alive and offering a job to Chloe at the Two Whales, a reality where Chloe doesn't know any of the new characters but Max does, a reality with Max in Seattle without Chloe, a reality with both of them in Arcadia Bay with everything seemingly fine, and near the end of issue 2, a reality where Max chose to sacrifice Chloe, a reality Chloe can't actually see. Spooky. What I really like about all of this is that it encourages you to reread the comic and try to find stuff you may have missed on your first reading which I often did and which perfectly mirrors the same aspect of replayability from the video games. Playing the episode again, paying a little more attention or making different choices, and finding stuff you missed on your first playthrough. That was really cool. 
I also really like how this plays into the larger premise around the comics, that it takes place in one version of events out of a multiverse of infinite possibilities. When the comic was initially announced slash leaked, a big detail that was repeated a couple of times was that this version of events was a possible, potential future for Max and Chloe, reinforcing the idea that neither ending in season 1 is canon. It didn't really occur to me at the time that this was also giving us a hint to what the story would revolve around. Thought that was kind of funny and I'm glad that there was actually a bigger idea behind the possible potential futures. And I also really like how this might be a way for Max and Chloe and us to not only see what happens in other versions of events, but actually interact and fully realize them. It's one thing to follow these characters and their journey through one of these realities, but it's another thing entirely to see that character actually see themselves in that alternate timeline. How would Chloe comprehend a reality where her mother is still alive? Or a reality where Rachel is still alive? Or a reality where she doesn't even exist? The comic can give us all kinds of opportunities to see what these realities might be like and how Max and Chloe deal with the reality that these exist in some way. To me, it's really interesting stuff, and I can't wait to see where this story thread might lead us. Focusing on one of the more interesting details of the story, the comic opens up with Max sitting on a cliff edge at some undefined time with these familiar blue butterflies separating the panels. Max appears to be wearing a jacket that she wore in this picture that must have been taken on the day she won her Blackwell scholarship. Which might mean that on this same day, she went to the cliff edge and started thinking about chaos theory. But that would put it before the events of season 1, before she got her time rewind power. Which really wouldn't make sense unless we went down this huge rabbit hole of theorizing future time travel stuff that I don't really have time to get into right now. So, for now, I'm going to assume that these panels, along with the page in issue 2, take place at some point in the future, a point the comic appears to be building towards. Max talks about the butterfly effect and chaos theory, about her realizing that she wasn't behind the cause and effect of a butterfly's wing, that she was instead a particle of dust caught in the beat of its wing just like everything else. This implies that Max didn't have a critical determinate role in the events that took place in Life is Strange, that her actions and choices and use of her powers weren't the cause of the storm and eventually the death and destruction that came out of it. Max and Chloe say as much in issue 2, with Chloe reminding Max about how many times she reminded Chloe that they have no idea whether they're responsible for the storm. Crazy shit happened and they shouldn't blame themselves for it. The actual cause of the storm, along with the origin behind Max's powers, aren't fully explained in Life is Strange. There's been a number of theories and tons of discussion over the years that have attempted to make sense of it all, but there's never really been a definitive answer. This is a huge topic on its own that I also don't really have time to get into right now, so I'll just cut to the chase. While I don't think we'll get a definitive answer from the comic, so far I'm still incredibly interested in whatever we'll get. What's causing these alternate reality jumps? Was Max just really a speck of dust caught in a butterfly's wing? Is chaos theory still a valid theory if there is another reality where Chloe is dead and there hasn't been a storm? What about the reality where Chloe and Max and Arcadia Bay are all seemingly fine? What did Max do in that reality? What other timelines might Max and Chloe find themselves facing? Again, I think this is all really interesting stuff, and there's a ton of directions and questions and maybe answers the comic could give us. One direction I hope it doesn't go down is the one that Polarize took all those years ago, where the supernatural took center stage of a game that, for the most part, centered around its characters. Most of you know this already, but I'm one of those fans that loves Life is Strange, but really dislikes Polarize. There's a number of different reasons why, and again it's a huge topic that I can't really talk about now, but shifting the supernatural from the background to the foreground was, I think, a big factor as to why that episode wasn't so great. And with the comic ramping up on this supernatural time stuff, as interesting as it is, it does worry me a little bit. 
So, I guess to wrap all this up really quickly, I'm interested to see where the time stuff ends up, but I hope the comic keeps its focus on what's really important. The characters, the internal conflict that Max and Chloe might go through when confronted with the supernatural, and how they might deal with these alternate realities together. How they might go about accepting their current reality, and whether they can finally put Arcadia Bay and all of its history behind them. Those are the kinds of things I'd love to see explored in a story about Max and Chloe facing their past. Anyway, those are my quick thoughts on the first two issues of Life is Strange Dust. I know I didn't really go into too much depth with some of the topics, but once we have the final two issues completing the set, I'll make another video taking a much more exhaustive look at the full series. For now though, in general, I like the comics, I'm interested in its direction, and it's just really nice to be getting more content focusing around Max and Chloe. Let me know what you guys thought about the comics, are you excited for the direction it's headed, do you like the way Max and Chloe or their relationship is portrayed, what do you think is going on with all the time stuff, let me know in the comments. I'll be back at some point in the future with a video talking about Life is Strange 2 Episode 2, as I'm also very excited to see where Season 2 will go with Sean and Daniel's story. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.